I cannot believe that in my last month's equivalent video, I didn't talk about coronavirus. I remember very, very specifically, like two days before I recorded all those videos, was when I did my deep dive into coronavirus. And that was when I like, by the time I recorded those videos, I really internalized that it was gonna massively change what, how we operated in the world. And um, yeah, anyway, here we are. Um, great time to get into reading if you're not into reading. Just, just pick up a book, any book. I have some recommendations. Feel free to peruse this channel. Speaking of recommendations, charreads.com. Um, I said last month that I wasn't ready to release it, but you know, we have to be kind to ourselves at the moment and I'm still not quite there, but it is live. You can check it out, charreads.com. Um, it's missing a few things that it needs for me to be like, go here all the time. Um, Cause I haven't set up like the newsletter aspect of it yet. And I also haven't vetted any of the content. <laughs> like it's all been pulled in from YouTube and Goodreads. Um, so it's not quite there. I need to like go through and maybe write some more reviews and formats and stuff properly. Uh, but it's coming along really well and looks really cool and I'm really excited about it. So um, have, a, have a little peek and tell me what you like about it and tell me the top things that you want. Obviously, I know that on the books page, we want to be able to like filter and sort it and stuff, but I'm um, really happy with it so far. And if you are a nerd like I am, the source code's all on GitHub if you wanna see how I've built it. Anyway, so let's talk about the books I read this month. I read six. Um, I have five of them physically here. Um, and the story of my reading this month was having expectations about books um, and then being let down by the books, like either being about different things or coming at things a different way to what I expected. So I guess what I'm trying to glean from this is that I need to really be aware of my preconceptions before starting a book um, and like purposefully trying to cleanse myself from them because I would have enjoyed all of these more had I had like a clearer mindset about them. So I'll go through them. Um, the first was The Uninhabitable Earth by David Wallace Wells. I uh, made a separate video about this one. Um, it is about climate change, but it's not really about climate change. Well, it is about, climate what am I saying? It's not about environmentalism. In fact, very specifically, why have I got all of these in my arm? This is silly. He says, I'm not an environmentalist and don't even think of myself as a nature person. It's like, well, really are you the person to be writing about? Anyway, this is about all of the ways in which we are royally fucked um, when it comes to the environment. So it talks about floods and wildfires and um, like having space to make food and like the water cycle and um, very heavy book about how we're all screwed. So I made a video about it. You can watch that if you're interested, but wasn't a giant fan because I came into it thinking it would be like an impassioned speech about here are the things that are wrong with some data, but like here are the things we're doing to fix it and make sure the world is habitable. Uh, but it was just the downers. The next book I read, I listened to, it was the audiobook of Maybe You Should Talk to Someone by Laurie Gottlieb. This is a therapist talking about her life as a therapist, like how therapy works and how she communicates with, with clients, but also um, about how she, um, her fiance uh, left her and how she, decided to go into therapy um, as like therapists apparently get therapy every now and then just to make sure they're okay anyway, which seems healthy. Um, but she like specifically wanted some like crisis um, management therapy um, and talking about her, her therapists and their different styles and uh, the kind of like thinking, thinking about the therapist from the point a view of a client and thinking about the client as the point from the point of view of the therapist. Am I making sense? Um, it was really interesting. I, I thought it was, it was very good. And it reminded me that like, I just want to read one book by each like vocation. Like I love, I don't need to read another book by a therapist about therapy ever again. Tick that box. Um, and I feel like I've read a lot of the kind of more like medical side of things, those kind of memoirs. Um, but I'm just really interested in any type of memoir about like an aspect of, of life and industry that 
I don't know. Um, so please, if you have any recommendations for like vocational memoirs um, that are like interesting and moving, I would be so interested to read them. So please leave your recommendations down below. The next book I read for my book club was The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak. Um, wildly acclaimed and beloved. Uh, it came out in 2004, 2005, 2006. I literally just said this in a video. 2005. Um, and it is about a girl during World War II. I made a full video about it. Um, I didn't like it as much as I could have because I had really high expectations and it was a lot more juvenile than I would have wanted. Um, so yeah, that's the book thief. The next book I read was H is for Hawk by Helen MacDonald. This is a memoir of a uh, falconer training a particularly unruly bird, a goshawk, um, through grieving her father. And I say this in the video I made about it, that that's kind of like the way it's been um, marketed and the way it's been described is, is, is like getting through grief through training a goshawk. I think there's a lot more to it than that. I don't even think that's the main thing that it's saying. Um, but yeah, I kind of came into it being being like, oh, it's gonna be about like a, a woman who's just like completely distraught and then makes a crazy decision to do something she has no idea how to do. When actually she's like fairly together and definitely knows a lot about hawks. <laughs> so um, different to what I expected, but actually when I kind of like got over that expectation, um, I, I did enjoy this quite a lot. Um, so yeah, further discussion in the video. Next book was a guaranteed love and that was Spring by Ali Smith, uh, my now favorite out of autumn, winter and spring. I thought it was great, so good, it was so good. It was so good. It just, just really captures what it's like to be in Britain at the moment. Um, well, not at the moment, like a year ago, I guess. <laughs> and as I said in my video, about this. Holy crap, I wish she was writing summer about the summer that's just coming because Ali Smith writing reverently about coronavirus is what I need in my life. <laughs> the last book I read, um, I've been meaning to for ages and then I like halfway through the month when we were all locked down um, and I was feeling sad, I was like, you know what's gonna solve this? Retail therapy. So <laughs> I put together a list of eight books and a whole new set of Harry Potter books because my old ones are like sad and gross and I can't read them anymore. So I have a brand new set of Harry Potter books, which is really exciting. Uh, and then I also bought just like eight other books. Um, my local bookshop sadly only had a few of them in stock, which is a shame and they couldn't order any in, so I had to get them on Amazon. Anyway, um, this is Tiny Beautiful Things by Cheryl Strayed. Advice on love and life from someone who's been there. Uh, firstly, ugliest book cover you've ever seen? Like, I really, I really hate it. And I've looked at other covers of this and they're not nearly as awful and I don't want this physical object in my house. Cheryl Strayed wrote Wild, one of my favorite books. Um, and she also was on a podcast called Dear Sugars with Steve Armand, which is one of my favorite podcasts of all time. Um, that podcast grew from a column that she used to write in an online magazine called The Rumpus. So this is the, um, some of the entries from that column, uh, basically like structured into a book. So it's an advice book. Um, they have maybe like 20 odd stories in here, maybe 40 like letters um, from people really struggling with, with different things in their life. Mostly quite deep subjects, some frivolous, but some like, you know, how do I move on from this death? Or how do I leave my partner? Um, or just like, what should I do in this like earth shattering choice? How do I be less angry? Um, a, a great range of things. And I, I read like a third of this and then I found like an old Slack thread um, from a colleague who said that she listened to the audiobook, And then I was like, why haven't I, like the audiobook is, read by Cheryl Strayed. Of course I want to do that. So I listened to the rest of it. Um, and it was just like having new episodes of the podcast, uh, which is now sadly over. Um, what are you going to do? But the thing I love about Cheryl Strayed's advice is that like, I'll read a story and I'll have an initial reaction to it. Um, and then she'll get into her response. And it's often like radically different to my reaction. Either she'll come at it with a lot more anger and passion, 
or a lot less than me and just have like different advice to what I would eyeball. And then by the time I've gotten to the end of her response, I'm like, of course she's right. She's so right. She's so right every time. The wisdom of this woman is just incredible. I didn't ever really feel like the um, podcast related to me. No, there was one about the invisible labor of women that I really took to heart and made my boyfriend take to heart. Um, but in here there were like two or three uh, stories that just kind of like hit me and have changed the way I'm thinking about some things. And I didn't really expect that. I expected to enjoy it in a kind of like perverse peeking in on other people's problems way um, and not in a way that I'd find anything that actually related to me. So that was, that was nice. And I would recommend this heartily. So that was March. Um, we'll see what April has to bring. This is already a few days into April. I just kept putting off doing them because I'm uh, really enjoying doing nothing at the moment. Like I'm actively trying to take pressure off myself um, because I can, especially because I, I haven't been very like economically affected by this whole situation. Uh, I can just let it be a kind of break for me. Um, and I'm enjoying that. I actually, we have a little like terrace out the back that we've moved in here in November and we've never really used because um, it's a bit sad. But then last week I put down some artificial grass on it and got a table and we're waiting on some chairs. And it's so like, this is the first day of like summer in London. It's 20 degrees, it's glorious outside. And we can just sit out there and read. And it's about taking those like little things that you enjoy. And I'm just trying to do those things more <laughs> and do the things I don't enjoy less. And um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, be, be nice to yourself. I shouldn't give you advice on how to act during a pandemic, should I? Uh, let me know what's been helping you. Have you enjoyed reading? Have you enjoyed reading like really like different things to what you usually read, like escapism fantasy stuff? Or do you like reading doom and gloom when there's doom and gloom around you? I keep being tempted to reread Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel, uh, which is there. Um, I can't pick it out because there's not enough height in this book to actually get things. That book is great, but it is about, uh, 20 years on in a like contemporary world where 98% of people have died from a um, pandemic. So maybe not the right time, but also maybe it is the right time. I can't tell. It's really hard to, to figure out. But um, I feel really good that I was able to just like buy loads of books that I like and I'm excited to read and just treat myself. And I hope if you can, you're treating yourself too. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you next month. Bye.